All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about average rate of change. And average rate of change is something we definitely need to talk about before we move forward and talk about instantaneous rate of change, but I've never felt like it fits really well with anything else, so I decided to break it out as its own video. This really won't take very long. Okay, and I think it won't take very long, mostly because this is something that you've seen, hopefully in your pre-calculus class. Uh, if you took AP pre-cal, that was a big point of discussion, uh, average rate of change. But, you know, in other classes too, even all the way back to Algebra 1, this is the idea of slope between two points. Okay, so the average rate of change of f is still rise over run. It's still y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But now, you know, we're talking about functions, we're a little older, more advanced. We're going to use f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, and I will also point out that on the graph, this average rate of change represents the slope of the secant line on the interval a to b. And maybe I'll draw you a picture of that here in a minute. Uh, but first, let's talk about the units of average rate of change. The units of an average rate of change are going to be the units of the output divided by the units of the input. And that is something that, at least in AP Pre-Cal, you know, if you took that course last year, uh, that's something that we discussed. Uh, not at length, but at least a little bit. Okay, and for a quick example, uh, I might tell you, okay, water is pumped into a tank. It's a very classic calculus situation. At a rate of R of T liters per hour, where T is measured in hours. What's the average rate of change of R over the time interval 1 to 3? Indicate units of measure. So this is kind of a two-part question. What's the average rate of change? What are the units? So we're going to start off by computing that average rate of change using the formula. Right? We're going to be interested in R over 1 to 3. So R of 3 minus R of 1 divided by 3 minus 1. Okay, and then we're going to pull those values from the table. We've got R of 3. We've got R of 1. So that'll be 950 minus 1190. And we're going to divide by 3 minus 1 which is two. I think we can do that. But 950 minus 1190, you know, without a calculator, that's the type of thing that you, know, you could make an arithmetic error on. So I recommend you just leave it unsimplified because that's an option we have. When it comes to the units of measure for this, okay, we need to go back and look at the units of the output and the units of the input. In this case, the output is R of T and the input is T. So R of T is measured in liters per hour. So I might just like you know, put a note down there. That's liters per hour. And T is measured in hours. Okay, so if I want the units, I'm going to write that directly to the right of the value of the average rate of change. It's going to be a fraction. Units of output is liters per hour. Units of input is hours. So it's 950 minus 1190 over 2 liters per hour per hour. Okay, now on the secant line thing, what that means is, you know, suppose you've got yourself a, a curve. And... The secant line between the two points, you know, A and F of A and B and F of B, uh, is going to be just the line that connects them, just like that. So it's the slope of that line that's connecting the two points. Uh, whereas an instantaneous rate of change, as we will see, you know, I mean, probably next time, is going to be uh, a slope of a tangent line that just that just sits at that one point. Uh, and I will show you how we're going to do that, um, but you just got to come back and, and keep showing up. Right. Now, another example I've got for you, um, which I think would be a good one to you know, help remind you of some things from prior courses that you're going to need to know in here, um, is find the average rate of change of f of x equals 4 to the x times sine of pi x on the closed interval 1 half to 3 halves. Uh, I do definitely like this one, because uh, we're going to take a fraction powers of 4, we're going to have to do some unit circle trig, this is good stuff here. Okay, so if we're taking the average rate of change of f over 1 half to 3 halves, that's going to be f of 3 halves minus f of 1 half divided by 3 halves minus 1 half. And we're just going to plug in x equals 3 halves and x equals 1 half into the formula for f, and we'll get this kind of monstrosity here. Hey, okay, what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to simplify this. Okay, because what if you were to be confronted with this question, say, in a multiple choice environment? I'm not saying you will. Um, this is kind of a stretch, and this is definitely one I made up. But in multiple choice, we do have to simplify our answer. Okay, so let's just start with that first term. 4 to the 3 halves sine of 3 pi over 2. Okay, 4 to the 3 halves, what we're going to need to do is deal with the denominator first to keep the numbers manageable. The 1 half power is the square root of 4, and we're going to take that to the third power. So that's going to be 2 to the third, and that feels like 8. Okay, then for sine of 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 is all the way at the bottom of the unit circle. And sine is the vertical displacement from the x-axis, so that's going to be negative 1. Okay. And the second term, the 4 to the 1 half sine of pi over 2, 4 to the 1 half, that's the square root of 4. And you know that's 2. And then sine of pi over 2, pi over 2 is at the top of the unit circle, and so that's going to be equal to 1. 
Now, I'm going to kind of rewrite this fraction, um, filling in all of the pieces I just figured out. 4 to the 3 halves, that's 8. Sine of 3 pi over 2, negative 1. 4 to the 1 half is 2. And sine of pi over 2 is 1. We're still dividing by 1. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I can do this arithmetic. Negative 8 minus 2 more, that's going to be negative 10. All right, I think that's about all I've got to tell you about average rate of change, at least for now. Okay, um, I think you know, we'll come back and we'll talk about instantaneous rate of change, and then we'll really get into the calculus, and then it'll get exciting. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.